Welcome to another Feed Scroll Generator video for Autodesk Inventor. This time I'm excited to tell you about what's new in version 3 of the app. Let's take a look. First off, we've got some dramatic performance improvements. Uh, these are particularly for single surface shafts, like the one we can see behind us here, where a single face spans the whole length of the shaft. Now these shafts could have taken half an hour, sometimes more than an hour to generate previously due to the heavy number crunching involved but we've actually got those times down to our one to three minutes typically to create those shafts. Multi-surface shafts where this helix surface is split up into multiple surfaces for more agility the performance has also been improved for those shafts as well and this is not at the expense of accuracy this is actually while improving the accuracy of the shaft as well so we'll take a look specifically for more aggressive bottle profiles where you have sharp corners the surface of the shaft now follows these more aggressive profiles much better than it did previously uh, giving very good production quality uh, geometry. Um, we've now added by default the capability for using real bottle shapes um, such as the bottle shape we can see behind here where it's not just a clean profile uh, uniform from top to bottom but you may have added chamfers uh, radii onto the bottle profile or drafts um, or even revolved a more complex bottle profile. There's no additional user input required to create shafts for these kind of bottles now. And number four, when we're simulating the bottle movement along the shaft we now get to see bottles before and after the shaft to get a better idea of how the bottles are moving and finally we've introduced uh, many robustness improvements uh, for edge cases of uh, more complex and strange shafts you may need to create. So let's head over into Inventor and we've got a shaft ready to go here if I hit the generate button and just briefly to show you the new options in here uh, we can still choose between a single surface shaft here or a multiple surface shaft except we've simplified the options if you want a multiple surface shaft you now adjust the quantity of surfaces using the accuracy slider higher accuracy slider equals more surfaces however in this case we're going to create a simple single surface shaft I'm going to pick a low accuracy here and I'm going to pick the lowest accuracy of bottle profile complexity which is the number of rails we're going to include in our loft to guide the surface and I'm simply just going to hit smooth build and OK to start creating this shaft. Now because it's a single surface shaft to create production quality geometry would have first off required a higher accuracy setting previously in a previous version of the app and secondly it could have taken half an hour maybe even more than an hour to create this geometry simply because of the high amount of number crunching required to create these surfaces uh, the, the single surface going along the shaft but you can see we're making good progress with this shaft already and it's just about to start calculating the helix surface that goes along it's doing that now this operation should take about 15 seconds or so um, and then it will get to work trimming the surface you can see here just needs a final trim surface and then we can sculpt it into uh, a shaft model there's the final trim surface and if I wasn't recording my screen this operation would have come out at about 50 seconds or so so we've got a colossal performance improvement over previous versions of the app um, and it's now sculpting the final shaft so here's the shaft complete it's done it in 71 seconds which isn't too shabby and if I exit that the critical thing we need to check here is do we have decent geometry that we can use for machining so let's save this part file and let's hit simulate so we're expecting even with the, the lowest settings that we used for the creation of this shaft because it's got such a simple bottle profile we should have geometry that is virtually perfect with respect to fitting the uh, the bottle so let's drag this uh, slider along and let's just take a, a zoom in here to have a look um, at how the fit is between the bottle and the shaft so you can see we do in fact have a effectively perfect fit between the bottle and the shaft here 
um, even with the low settings uh, we, we used. So let's hit return. And there's our successful high performance generation of a simple shaft. Now, if we added more complexity to this shaft, the generation times can go up to three minutes, sometimes as many as five or 10 minutes, but still a colossal improvement uh, over uh, the previous versions of the app. So the second uh, improvement I wanted to show you guys is the ability for the app now to follow aggressively shaped bottles without any reduction in accuracy. So I've got a part file here that I've created already. I'm going to hit simulate on this one. If we take a look at the bottle profile here, you can see it's got some, uh, it's got a reasonably sharp edge here for the bottle. So a little more difficult for the app to follow but let's hit simulate and let's see how we get on here in terms of following that profile of the bottle. So it's just generating the, uh, the simulation now. And previously the app would have had some difficulty um, getting a decent um, fit to the, uh, to the bottle here. But if I zoom in, I can see here we've got uh, again a virtually perfect fit between the bottle and the uh, and the shaft even in the areas of high curvature there okay enhancement number three less major but still very useful is now the ability to create shafts for revolved chamfered filleted more organically shaped bottles let me show you what i mean so i've created a few example ones here here's a shaft with a bottle that is certainly not a clean uh, extrusion profile and we get a good fit with this bottle all the way along the shaft if I hit simulate on this one I'll show you that despite the fact that the bottle tapers uh, and isn't uh, a constant profile and creating these kind of shafts now while this is generating the simulation doesn't involve any extra user input it just uh, happens by default there's no extra requirement from the user. So if I drop this down here, if I create a half section view in Inventor now just using the standard Inventor tool, we can see that the profile here uh, fits the bottle very well. So it's going to start off one side, uh, let's just move this along here, and the profile hugs the bottle as we move um, down. So you see the bottle sort of rolling along uh, along that concave section there until it basically comes out this side effectively with a perfect fit. Okay, so these kind of shafts can be created by default now without any extra input from the user. Here's another couple of examples. So here's another tapered shaft. Again, no extra input required. You can uh, sketch your own bottle shape and revolve it if you need, add fillets and chamfers and as long as the bottle surfaces are all tangent to each other then uh, you shouldn't have any issues creating the shaft. Here's another one uh, just for an example and another one here with an actual sort of angled bottle uh, and this one created just fine as well and these ones are creating in a couple of minutes typically uh, with production quality geometry. Okay, um, improvement number four, you may have spotted it already if you've got eagle eyes watching this video, but it's actually the ability to view the bottles as they approach the shaft or exit the shaft when running a simulation. Let's see what I mean by that. If I want to zoom this out a bit, you can see the bottles leading up to the shaft um, and also exiting the shaft at the other end to give a bit of a better idea about um, the conditions at the start and the end and the data that we um, get out will include the, sh the bottles that have left the shaft or not yet joined the shaft. We can see a negative number here um, and this one's longer than the shaft is. Um, so small addition but pretty useful. That was a user request that one. And the enhancement number five is simply more robust code and error handling, error checking feedback to the user about what's going on when you're creating these shafts. So all in all, we're pretty pleased with this version three update. Hope you enjoy it. Get in touch.